Io ricordo la prima volta la mia nonna è andata a Stati Uniti e una venerdì sera per lo Shabbat. E poi ha preso in braccio le due candele, porta candele, per andare giù in una cantina per accendere la cande le candele dello Shabbat. Mio padre ha detto, mamma, mamma, questa America, la terra, paese di libertà. Le ha detto, non, no, non sono sicura. <laughs> And, and so she continued in America to light candles in, the, we call it the basement, the cellar in the cantina, all of her life. Because many, many traditions, many things that we did, we Maranos did, to, to hold on to our roots, they became practices. They became practices. And it was, it was very difficult for especially Calabresi, very, very difficult to, to know which things a family did are superstition, which things are tradition, which things are cultural, and which are religious. Well, I think that, that shows us uh, a, a, a good aspect of the film that Rabbi is talking about, understanding the different practices that people had that they didn't even know were related to their religious cultural history. Now, That's what... In, yeah. Rabbi, in your case, you knew your family. You knew you were Jewish, so that, even though yes. the lighting of candles was kind of still hidden, it was a Jewish tradition. But what about people, uh, let's say in Calabria, in your ancestral home, who would do things they didn't know they that they were kind of keeping up with the Jewish tradition. So how would you how would you find out what they did, or or that they might even be Jewish? A very good question because it was really trial and error and uh, because my grandmother, my father brought my grandmother to the United States, I, we all had the opportunity to grow up Jewish because there was a Jewish, an active Jewish community where as in Calabria there was no active or public presence or organized Jewish experience for over 500 years. So I went back home to Serastretta, the little town where my father and my ancestors were from, a town founded by five Jewish families who were running from persecution. And I knew from the stories my father told and from what I had understood about the history of the town that back four and five hundred years ago, everybody who settled there was Jewish. Everybody. So I would go around town and I would say, do you think you're Jewish? And people would say, no, I don't think so. And then I realized I was asking the wrong question. What I needed to do was I needed to say, do you have any family traditions that seem unusual in terms of what other Italians, other Southern Italians are doing? And then I even became more specific. And I said, how about when a baby is born? Oh yes, when a baby is born, we put a red string in the crib, which of course is, goes back to the Kabbalah. And what about when um, children uh, reach 12 and 13? Well, when a girl reaches 12, we have a special meal, a special welcoming meal, and we make special blessings for her. And uh, what about marriage? Well, well, when we when we marry, we have uh, we present the bride and groom with a crocheted bedspread that will go on onto the matrimoniale, onto the, the marriage bed. But before it goes into the house, for Four men hold the four corners, and we put the bride and groom underneath the uh, underneath sotto la coperta, under the covering, which of course is reminiscent of the chuppah. And then there were all kinds of kitchen traditions. I began saying, "What do you do in the kitchen? How do you prepare food? How do you what do you eat? Do you do you separate anything?" Oh, yes, indeed. We never have uh, cheese. We never have formaggio con carne. Never cheese with um, meat because as a famale, it will be bad for the stomach. And that's how I began to uncover all of these Jewish traditions. And of course, by being in the town that was part of my, my heritage, I was accepted as well. So putting those two things together made, uh, gave me a wealth of information that we see in the film. So when you would meet a family in your neighborhood and you'd hear these stories for them, and these were people who, by their own accounts, were good Catholics, probably. I mean, they probably went to church. Well, what did they say? No. No, How did they no. react? When you said, Rabbi, here you are, this American-Italian, and you're telling them you're Jewish. 
how did they react? Some people might say, please, go away. I don't need this. That's right. That's right. You're absolutely right. And some people did say, "Oh, oh, oh, mio dio! <laughs> this, this can't be. This can't be true." But um, I noticed that in our town, many, many people said, "Siamo laici." You're secular, and and that was because many people never felt comfortable in the church. Now, some people did. And, uh, and there would be, of course, a, an influx of, um, of, of uh, participation at Christmas and Easter. But um, many people, when they got married in the, in the Catholic Mass, did this little ceremony before the bride and groom walked into, uh, into their home into the, the home into the home that they would share together as husband and wife, which is very much the tradition of the hoppa. The hoppa represents the roof of the home that you will that you will share. It's symbolic of the home that you will actually have. And uh, so there were all kind many times I would say to people that, you know, these traditions are very interesting, that they go back they go back centuries. There's a possibility that your family was Jewish. And for the most part people would say, you know, we always thought that. We always thought that, and 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 of course, using the right word was interesting. Was was uh, became an important part of my discussions and questions as well, because Ebrite Ebrite Jews Palestinesi, because back years ago the area was called Palestine, um, uh, um, um, Ebrei. Um, there were just um, uh, all all different kind Judeca. All different kinds of words in both Italian and dialect, which were also a little had a little little uh, touch of Hebrew too. So it was very for me. It was very much being a detective. But I will say this: there were a couple of deathbed conversions, deathbed um, uh, announcements. Um, a young woman, yes, confessions. That's the word I'm looking for. A uh, woman came to me and she said. Uh, our, our grandmother just passed away, and before she died, she uh, gathered all of us, and she said, please do not call the priest, do not, when I'm dead, do not put a rosary in my hand, no uh, pictures, no pictures of saints with my, with uh, my prayer for the, a Catholic prayer for the dead for me on the back, and, uh, um, and wrap my body in a sheet, bury me by sundown of the next day, I never told you we're Jewish, and she literally took her last breath. And the mother and the grand and the daughter came to me and said, "What do we do? What do we do?" And so that's how I've opened the uh, how I've been able to open the door to Jewish traditions to the people not only in my town but in many of these mountain communities where Jews fled during times of persecution.